It has long been a source of debate. Does your birth order affect the trajectory of your life? Our next guest says it does. Parenting expert Michael Gross claims firstborns really do rule the world. We saw it with Marsha Brady. Well, all I hear all day long at school is how great Marsha is at this or how wonderful Marsha did that. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. It happened with Alex P. Keaton. By the end of the week, I'm going to be running the bank. Mrs. Ryan is going to be running the vacuum cleaner. And it's certainly the case for Kim Kardashian. Is Kim your favourite daughter? Yes. Being the firstborn has its perks, and now there's science to prove it. Parenting expert Michael Gross has updated his best-selling book, Why Firstborns Rule the World. In it, he analyses birth order and shows how it's the key that unlocks who we are from childhood to adulthood. This is a big debate. Michael Gross joins us now from Melbourne. Michael. You have trod where angels fear to tread. <laughs> uh, the book is called Why Firstborns Rule the World. So why do they? Well, they rule the roost in their family. <laughs> so they're the first ones to come along. And uh, so they, they rule the first group they're in, which is their family. And they get 100% attention. So it's a pretty good position to be in. They get a lot of responsibility. Come on, you've got to look after your younger brother or your younger sister. So responsibility and, and the expectations are really high on that group. And we also know that firstborns are the rule keepers. They love rules. They also very much value authority. So they're born to rule in lots of ways. <laughs> you first released this in 2003. Why did you need to update it? Well, since 2003, we've had a dramatic shrinkage in families. Uh, in 2003, the uh, mean sort of number of kids in a family was three. Now, sort of two decades later, it shrunk to two. So we've got unbelievably, it's 60% of Australian families with kids up to the age of 15 have two kids or less. So we've sort of dropped a kid off in that time. So family shrinkage means that we've got more firstborns, firstborns as a percentage of the population. And unfortunately, we've got the demise of the middle child. We don't have too many middle kids. There's only about 15% of kids at the moment who are surrounded by anyone else. We've also got more only children. So if only children were a political party, they're now part of the mainstream. So okay. there's been lots of changes. All right. Uh, that's fascinating. All right, let, let's go through that. Um, I've got two middle children. So oh. do they change at all? Does that change your numbers? So when you say it's, the middle children is always an interesting one, it's, it depends on gender, so it's not so much a matter of does it change things. So if you've got four kids, you might have two firstborns, you might have, have uh -huh. um, sorry, two boys, you might have a girl, and then you might have a boy. So if it goes that way, I reckon the second boy, or the second born is more like a middle because he's stuck between mm. a whole mm. bunch of people. And, the, and your girl is sort of special because of her gender. So once you start to unpick it all and you start oh, to look at gender and spacing and things like that, then it won't make sense. So I prefer to call it the family, family constellation. So just like <laughs> we get a, a constellation of stars and they all form their own pattern, so families always form their own pattern. Right. So birth order work, works within each family. So it makes sense once you understand, once you understand the rules. So yeah. let's go back to the, the most common family in Australia, which you, you said is now two. What happens to the second one? Yep. Well, that depends. So you can have a second one that goes two ways. So often if there's a girl and a boy, sometimes they're like two firstborns because, you know, we've got each gender, which is mm. terrific. And that sort of keeps mum and dad often. And if you've got two kids of a similar gender, what we often get is, is the second will often be a mixture of a second and the youngest. Although we never call that second a baby. We always we keep that to the third or the fourth. But you'll, you'll get that second one who's more, who shares the middle born or second characteristics, which will always, or she, will always be different than the first born. And then they'll be the sort of the, the, the youngest, which is, they're the sort of agents of change. The pressure's off when the youngest one comes yeah. along. And, um, every youngest child should write a letter to their oldest sibling thanking them for breaking their parents in for them, and that's what they do. <laughs> so I called that... I called that position the, the Prince Harry effect, because if you look at, look at Prince William and Prince Harry, Prince William is born to rule. You know, he is the 
he is the rule keeper. He married someone in, who fits into that royal family beautifully. And then you've got Harry, who's the spare. You've got the heir, and then you've got the spare. And for poor old Harry, every time that William had another child, he dropped back in the pecking order, so to speak. And, and so he's very much like that, that challenger. He says, well, there's not much place okay. for me. Yeah. And, um, it's fair. Except yeah, no. he's not thanking his parents. No. <laughs> Harry's doing the opposite of thanking his parents. So. All right, Michael, exactly thank you very right. much for that. Good to see you. Michael Gross's updated Good book, on Thanks, Why Firstborns Rule the World, is out today. It's a big debate, is it? Isn't it? it?